Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built them themselves. <laughs> folks, it's Mad Dog Merv and here we are with the Polar Express layout and we're just getting things finished up. We've got the invitation sent and we'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to show you the video of, well, our Polar Express event. So we've got the grandkids coming over and, uh, well, we're going to have some fun. Stick with us and check Today's out. Today's going to be with us at the train shop in Salt Lake City. It's a place that I like to take my kids, my younger ones, and my grandkids beautiful this time of year they get the uh, layouts all decorated up for christmas it helps get us get us in the christmas spirit and they even have a polar express layout in the back that's a lot of fun so i pick some figures up here and we're going to start working on the polar express layout what's ironic is as we were walking outside well i run into this and if you saw the show last week we did a model build of a 70 um galaxy and here out front there's a 70 galaxy this guy had pretty cool i thought and pretty ironic so this year i decided that i really wanted to go all out so i made these invitations i printed these up on some cardstock and i made these tickets out of um uh, photo paper um and put these together and i would send them out to each of the grandkids you can see the ticket it says, bring your ticket with you. So they're supposed to bring the ticket. I'll punch the ticket and it'll get them, you know, in on the, the whole festivities. So uh, here's the inside of the invitation. I just really thought that this would be kind of a fun little keepsake for them. Here's the back. It says, you are cordially invited to, you know, grandpa's <laughs> event. So it has day and time on there. And just, again, thought this would be a whole lot of fun for them to have. Put it in a little green envelope with a uh, red ribbon and a little bell on the end. And then I addressed it to each one of them and got it sent out. We're going to have hot chocolate and some snacks. We're going to watch the movie. But the centerpiece for the whole thing is my Polar Express layout. You remember this from last year. Put it together in like three days uh, to this point and got the uh, Polar Express train with three cars. And we had a great time, and it, it was a real hit with the little kids. I let them run it, and then I ran it. It makes all kinds of cool noises. But this year I wanted to upgrade. So to begin with, that gazebo that was on there actually was based on a real gazebo. This is what I grew up with in Sugar House. This is how I got to see Santa, is he was in a nice little warm gazebo and we stood in line outside in the freezing cold to see him. But anyway, um, that's where I got the idea for the gazebo, and, except for the one I've got is, of course, a lot bigger. So this year, I wanted to light it so you could see inside. So I got this little string of lights. They're battery powered. And I put a bunch in there and voila, here you go. There's Santa, number one, sitting uh, in there with a young man on his lap. And here's a family waiting to go see Santa, Santa's little helper, uh, asking the name of the child, of course, because that's one of the little tricks of being a Santa. You know, you just listen real closely. So here's the pond and we got the skaters on there and I got two more Santas. Santa number two, Santa number three. He's over by the wishing well and Santa number two is skating. Remember, we count up how many sound Santas we have. We're also going to look for some other hidden things on this layout, like my dogs. So they're all on here. So Santa number four is up on the ridge line. He is between the ridge line and the pond, kind of overseeing the pond. And he was there last year and I didn't move him this year. Santa number five is over here, kind of by the river. And he last year was visiting a hobo who was building a fire. Well, this year it has kind of a special meeting. Uh, I have a son who is, well, 
he's out, uh, let's just say he's camping this winter. And here Santa is. I hope he's visiting my son this year and helping to take care of him while he's out there in the cold, uh, making a campfire and, uh, you know, living in a tent. Someday I will get that fire lit. I've got some little bulbs that, uh, you know, flicker. Uh, but I did clear this area out. I added some soft flake snow and there you go. So moving on over by the river here, we've got a little waterfall. I finally got that built. Of course, it's not quite finished here. Uh, it's still drying, but at least you can see that uh, I'm trying to get one in there. And just up from the waterfall, you have the little kid on the sled from last year. And you've got this group of kids building a snowman. And Harold isn't here this year. He wasn't up there. We'll see where Harold moved to. If you checked out my show a couple weeks ago on making winter scenes, you would have seen this one. We built a snowball fight. I thought this was very appropriate to put there near the house. You've got kids on one side and kids on the other side. And this is my son's uh, dog, Rocco, who lives with us. And poof, there he is, right there on this little scene, barking at the kids while they throw the snowballs. There's a total of 10 Santas and 5 dogs, and Rocco is the first of the dogs to be on there. So this is how the house area was before I got started this year. I decided it was way too plain, and I'm going to put that uh, snowball fight right between the, the house, the side of the house, and the sledding hill. I'm going to take the house off and the figures, and uh, we're going to get going on putting a few other things here, too. Let's see what uh, all we wind up with. Uh, mostly, they're going to be those little modules that I did. So there's this one which is an igloo and a, an outside Christmas tree that's getting decorated. And you can see here, here's the module in the back of the house, fit perfectly. You've got uh, somebody there reaching over <laughs> uh, on the next to top rung. And you've got, looks like a little kitty cat on top who's uh, checking out the scene. You've also got someone down below who's uh, pointing out uh, what needs to be done. There's actually a little kid crawling underneath the tree, but you can't see him from this particular angle see also that I've added a fence in the back and on the side between the house and the rails. And here the fence is, goes around the front. I put some lights on the house this year. You'll see those here in a bit. i uh, got the old Ford in the driveway, got the dog house there, and uh, we've got some folks out front. And I think we have a Santa. Let's see, that would be Santa number six, right? Wow. Well, there he is. Looks like he's talking to some folks there on the balcony. Some very well-dressed folks out front. Looks like they're headed out to the vehicle to go somewhere. And Bandit is on the front porch. You really can't see him too well. But Santa is actually talking to Santa number seven, who is on the roof. Hey, how about that? See the snowball fight in the back there. So I wanted to add a nativity scene this year, and that was another one of the winter scenes I did. So I picked up some figures, uh, Mary, Joseph, Baby, uh, the Three Wise Men, and some uh, critters <laughs> and livestock and put this little scene together. However, when I put this scene on the layout, I didn't like the way that it fit. So I had to modify it a bit. I had to take the trees off and cut it and I cut it and put it right up against the, the hill. And I thought it turned out a lot better here. Put a fence out front and I've got some folks looking at the nativity scene. It's one of those that, you know, supposedly has mannequins. There's a an angel there too as well. Well, here is something that I picked up. This, um, well, they're like little Christmas stands uh, from a company called Bush. And these, I think, are going to work out really nice on the Polar Express layout. You can see the shelves. There is some, uh, some beer steins and some kegs. Uh, I'm not sure what all of this is. We'll figure that out. Those uh, are lights, actually. They're to simulate lights. A couple of standing tables and a bunch of toys and things. So we'll see how this uh, we'll see how this turns out. Set up because I wanted the little buildings that were in it, but it came with this really cool barbecuer. It's like four pieces, and so I took some fine gray ballast and I took a couple of pieces of uh, black fine cinders. Put that in here, glued it in, added some reddish orange paint, and look, hey, looks like it looks like cold burning. And here we got the grill on it. Got some steaks and some brats on there, and I'm gonna put a spatula in Santa's hand, and he's gonna be uh, well flipping some food for us. I was really excited by this, and thought, well, 
we're gonna we're gonna put this up here on the hill so here we are with Santa number eight and you can see he's well he's flipping the food and there's our little buildings I'm trying to get those lit. One has some toys and stuffed animals and things in it. And then the one he's standing by actually has some uh, food and some kegs and th things in there. There's some stand-up tables. And look, there's a little kitty cat right by him there uh, waiting for him to drop something. And you see all the folks that are lining up to see Santa in the gazebo. Hey, that's pretty cool. So down this little path here, we've added this big tree and some big presents underneath. Thought that was fun. A couple of small sleds with some presents in, but that guy from last year who was on the bench, uh, just exhausted holding all the packages. Yep, there he is right there in the center. And a gentleman who is walking down the path because you come out in the back and here he's walking down the path. And here's Grizzly. Um, I had to include him again this year, meeting his angels. I sure miss this big doof of a dog. But uh, anyway, I had to include him again this year, meeting the angels. Bandit was dog two, and Grizzly makes dog three. And here's dog number four, and that is our rocket girl. And there she is, laying on her back, wanting people to rub her belly. She always wants that. She's there by that little Christmas tree. Santa number nine is here in the water tower. And he's watching over this part of the layout from the water tower. I thought this was a good place to hide him. See if the kids can find him. And here's our last dog, Harold. I've moved him over here. He's barking at some kids who are playing football this year. I've played football in the snow a lot. And, man, it was a lot of fun. But uh, here you go. thought this would be kind of a neat thing there in the park. And finally, Santa number 10 is up here pretty close to where he was last year, uh, above the tunnel. He's up in the mountains watching over the entire scene. And here you can see him, a little bit better shot, and uh, the water there at the base of the mountain. So let's take a look at this thing run, shall we? Two more cars, the hot chocolate car and another coach. Pretty cool, huh?